So now I will be showing you an example of how we can do cool hunting with Twitter and with um, the Google Search API. So let's start by collecting some data. Um, for example, I would like to know what people are saying and thinking about um, the Swiss franc fluctuation. So I will create a new data set, which I call Swiss franc analysis. And now I will fetch some data using the Twitter fetcher. And for that, I need first to specify the query. Then I will tell it that I want uh, 5,000 tweets. I will tell it that I want all the tweets and that the tweets should be connected with the search term so that I can construct a fully connected graph. I will take tweets of all languages. I will take um, only one run and I will not restrict it um, to any specific location. Now um, I have to use um, um, Twitter API keys and um, now I'm I can run um, up to 180 queries for uh, within 15 minutes. And now I have my results from Twitter. And as you see, I only got um, 2,760 results, which means that um, within the last um, 10 days or so, or eight days, there was only that many tweets about the topic Swiss franc. I can look at the structure, which is connected right now to the uh, search term Swiss franc. And so we will get the star. And Swiss franc, the search term is here in the center. And so each of those nodes here is a person. And if I would like to know how important the person is. I already have a first quick um, way of sizing it by followers. And so the Wall Street Journal jumps out with a lot of, has been favorited a lot. It has a lot of followers. We can also look at the number of favorites. Well, there is other others who have more. The RMB investor has even more this one too. Or we can look at how many times it has been listed. And then it's back to the Wall Street Journal and to business. So this is a one first quick analysis. I can also look at the activity over time. So we see this started in 2015 uh, February 2nd and goes um, to February 8th, so over the last six days. And the average frequency per hour oscillates between two tweets. The most that was ever tweeted was 24 tweets. So now we can also um, do a quick content analysis. So I will calculate the sentiment and look at the emotionality, how positive people are tweeting about the Swiss franc. And when I do a quick word cloud view, I will see what they are saying. It's not very positive. So we still have Swiss franc turmoil and the impact is still seen big. And so there are some negative tweets. But the franc itself is now more neutral than it used to be before. So we have 65 positive and 55 negative tweets about this. Um, now we have another nice feature. We can look at where on the world people have been tweeting about the Swiss franc. For that, I need to do a location annotation run. And I will just lose my pre-loaded um, location database. And now when I look at the geographical view, 
I will see where people have been tweeting and how positive or negative they are. So we have 37 tweets in Europe, we have 32 in the US, and the rest has not been able to um, uh, be geocoded. But here we can increase the number of words. So the central bank is being tweeted about, Julius Baer is being tweeted about, but not very positive. So now we can go back to our analysis and then we can see who, whose tweets have been retweeted the fastest. So now we can um, look, uh, remove the search term Swiss franc. And so I search for Swiss franc. Here is the search term and I will remove it. And now, when I look at the picture again, it will be a much different view. It's cluttered now. I will recalculate between us because now the network structure has changed. So I will calculate between us again. And now, when I size that by between us, P da Costa is the most central one. And here we have another one, the Business Insider and zero hedge. Now let's compare that to how people are tweeting about the euro. So I will run another fetch. Which, but first I need to create the data set, which I call euro. I will fetch the Twitter stream for euro. I again take 5,000 tweets. I collect only, um, um, actually I think I only take 4,000. To make it more comparable, notice the search term, and that's all I need to do. And now I will get 4,000 tweets. Now, for the Swiss franc, I before had removed the um, central actor search term Swiss franc, and that means I have to close it, the data set, and reload it again, so that the pristine Swiss franc data set, including the search term, will be loaded again. Um, or even better, I will merge the two data sets, the Swiss franc and the Euro data set. And I call that F Euro. And when I now open it, we will see which term is the more important ones and it's probably Euro, but we will see that in a second. And we also see the number of actors. We could remove some actors, but now when you look at that picture, we'll see Euro, this is probably all Euro, and this here is Swiss franc. But if you want to visualize it, we can just say original data set. And then we have the little green cluster, Euro, and the much bigger yellow cluster. Uh, little green cluster, Swiss franc, yellow cluster, Euro. And I can, um, again, recalculate between this. And then, as long as I include the search terms, the betweenness of the search term will show me how important such a term is. So let's do the process, annotate centrality, calculate betweenness. And now we will know how important such a term is. It takes a little bit more time. And then I now size by betweenness centrality. 
you see that So when I size that, Euro has between us, a very high between us, 30 million, and Swiss franc has a lower between us. So people are talking much more about the Euro than they are talking about the Swiss franc. 